Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. My name is Howard Pinsky, and I'm going to be your host for the next two weeks. Whether you like me or hate me, you're stuck with me for about two weeks. But I'm really excited to be back hosting these daily challenges, and I'm excited to see all of you in the chat here on Behance. If you're joining us on YouTube, head on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live so you can chat along with us, ask questions, and just have a good time. We've got Devang and Ankita and Undine and Laura and Marsha, who's brand new to Adobe XD. Welcome, Marsha. And I think these are the perfect videos and live streams to watch if you're new to Adobe XD. And I'll show you in a second. You can also go back and watch previous daily creative challenges if you really want to just dive into things while we're not streaming live here. Lexine and Joyce and, and Paco. Paco's in the house. Welcome, Paco. If you are tuning in live, <laughs> The Boop Squad. Yes, Megan, the Boop Squad is here. I will do a boop at some point today. Um, I love that, the Boop Squad. If you are tuning in live, let me know who you are and where you're tuning in from. And of course, if you're like Marsha and brand new to Adobe XD, again, welcome. But let me know that as well. Susan is new here as well. Great to see you. All right, so daily creative challenge. I don't even know what daily creative challenge. We've been doing this for a long time. And I host a bunch of them. We've got Andrea and Jesse, a lot of amazing hosts. And I'm back, excited to be back. Let's hop over to my screen for a moment. Let's explain this whole shindig. If you're new to this, this is the welcome stream. So you're gonna get all the information about these daily challenges. And tomorrow we are going to unlock the first challenge of this series. And I don't want to give too much away. I'm excited about this. We're doing something a little bit different just for tomorrow. That's all I'm going to say for now. You'll have to wait until then. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be different. It's going to give you some new opportunities. So stay tuned for that. So behance.net slash challenge slash XD. Head over there. You can get all the information about the daily challenge. If you're new to this and you haven't signed up yet, there's a big blue button at the top. You can't miss it. Press the button so you're notified when new challenges are released. And as this says at the top, there are nine challenges in these two weeks. So tomorrow is the first one. We'll run until Friday and then back next week, Monday to Friday for the remaining five. November 30th to December 11th. So down here, this is kind of how it works. Each day you're gonna receive a challenge. Again, Monday to Friday, except the first Monday. Weekends, I'm relaxing, so I won't be here. You can come here on, on, on the weekends, I'm not here. You can join us in our community chat, which I'll show you in just a moment, it's on Discord. You can watch us live. So I'm here two o'clock Pacific time, every single day, Monday to Friday. And then you can share your work on Behance or on Discord. If you're sharing on Behance, use the keyword XD Daily Challenge so we can search for it. And then if I hop over to Discord, there is a link right there. Hey, Alice, welcome. And if I'm not mistaken, is it today? Actually, you know what? Let me let me, let me me hop over to the schedule. I think Alice is after me. Yes, so Alice and Sid are after me. But if you missed today's streams, we started off the day with getting started with Spencer, fantastic artist and illustrator. Definitely go back and watch those episodes. Paul Tranny kicked off the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, character design with Jonah, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Julia, video editing with Olivia and Zach, me, hi. And then right after this, Doodle Therapy with Alice and Sid again. Fantastic streams, by the way. So stick around after this if you need to just relax and wind down a little bit. Doodle Therapy is fantastic. All right, so back into Discord. You can click on that link, hop over to Discord. It's just a good time. We've got, I don't know how many people we have. Last I checked, there was over 50,000 designers in Discord, which is madness. So many different people. It's amazing. We've got almost 2,000 people online right now. But if you want to get the latest in the daily challenges, or if you just want to share your work, you can pop it in the feedback section. You can ask questions about Adobe XD, whatever it might be that's on your mind. Get career advice, share tips and tricks, or just chat about whatever it is that you might be chatting about. So Discord's a fantastic place, great people in there. Hop in there and have some fun. And then again, starting tomorrow when we unlock the first challenge, you'll be able to scroll down to this section here and the first challenge will be unlocked right here. Uh, uh, Jan is saying, I am new here as well. This is so cool, can't wait to participate 
in the challenge. Yeah, these challenges are fantastic. I've been hosting them for quite a while. I've also watched a bunch of the challenges that weren't hosted by me, and I've interacted with so many different people in the community. And what's amazing about this and these challenges is that so many designers have started with Adobe XD because of these challenges and are now working in the field which is amazing. I get so many messages on Discord and Slack and Twitter and all these different places that they've watched my challenge or Andrea's challenges or Jesse's challenges and they've been able to build up their skills as a designer. And many of the guests we've had on Adobe Live, like Kate Kassab or Eric Sue, or so many different people, we found through these daily challenges. So participate in them, build up your skills, learn something new. Even if you are not necessarily using Adobe XD in your day-to-day -day workflow, it's gonna teach you something new. It's gonna make you a better designer, hopefully. So that's kind of the rundown of the daily creative challenge. And let me hop over here for a second uh, to letsxd.com, website that I built uh, about two years ago, I think, and has a ton of information on Adobe XD. We also have a great getting started course from Danny Beaumont, one of the product managers on the XD team. We have a few new features, 3D transforms, scroll groups, stacks. So if you're new to XD or you want to learn some advanced tips and tricks, you can definitely hop over to letsxd.com. I'm sure Sam will be posting a link in the chat in just a moment. But a lot of good stuff over there if I do say so myself. All right, so we've kind of touched on what the daily creative challenge is all about. Again, the first challenge does launch tomorrow. So what I want to do in the meantime is I do want to hop over to Adobe XD and just go over a few prototyping workflows. I love prototyping. I'm big on prototyping. If you follow me on Dribble, Drib, Dribble, blah, blah. if you follow me on Dribble or Twitter, I post a lot of prototyping features and ooh, so Marsha says I've watched part of Let's XD so great. Thank you Marsha. I do appreciate that. Many more videos coming soon. So I do I do a lot of prototyping um you know, explorations and shots that post on Dribble and Twitter. So we're definitely gonna cover quite a bit of prototyping in the next two weeks. So I figured, you know, let's use some of this time today and do a breakdown of prototyping in Adobe XD, kind of a crash course, mainly because I'm working on a new video on all the things prototyping. And I have all these assets that I designed. So let's, let's do it. So prototyping essentially allows you to navigate and transition from one artboard to another. And it also allows you to transition between different component states. And I'm gonna show you how that works in a moment. And it really brings your designs to life. So I've got this experience here, this gaming experience I've been working on. And I may want to be able to navigate between these different screens, right? And I want my users and my testers to be able to really experience this as if this were a real device or a real prototype, right? And that all starts within prototype mode right here at the top. And if I zoom in here, you can see we have three modes in XD. We have design, prototype, and we have our share mode. So I'm going to hop over to prototype just like that. And what you want to do to start is select the object that your users or yourself will be clicking or tapping on, or we'll get into a few other uh, workflows in a moment. So in this case, I'm going to tap on Maria's avatar. And we've got this blue handle over here to the right. And what I want to do is I want to drag this handle to start. We can also click on it, but we'll get to there. I want to drag this handle over to the artboard of my choice, right? So I'm going to drag this all the way over here and just drop it in place, right? So now I've set up my destination. And you're going to notice inside of the properties inspector to the right. And if again, if you're new to XD, like many of you in the chat, you're going to learn all these terms like property inspector, tools panel, as we go through the two weeks of this daily challenge. But this over here to the right is the properties inspector. Design mode, share mode, and prototype mode all have one. And this is where you really customize this interaction. So in this case, we want to keep things simple. We want users to be able to tap on Maria's profile picture and it's gonna do something, right? So I'm gonna choose tap as the trigger. And then down here is that something, which is our action. So in this case, we don't wanna to get too fancy just yet. We'll get fancy in a moment, but I'm gonna choose transition. And this will give me a few options. Of course, the destination has already been set based on the wire that I dragged over to the second artboard, but I wanna choose my animation. And we have a bunch of different options. I'm gonna show you some of these in a moment. 
we have none, which is essentially a cut. So it'll go from one artboard to the other instantaneously. We have a dissolve, which we'll start off with, right? And then we have slides and pushes. Let's start with dissolve, and we can also choose some easing options. I found that ease in and out is a pretty good option. Snap is nice too, and you'll see that on the auto animate example. The rest of them I typically don't even touch, especially bounce. Uh, maybe I'll show show you bounce in a, in a moment or two. It's just over exaggerated. I'm sure somebody that maybe that'll be my challenge for today. I want to see somebody use bounce and make it look decent. I I can't do it. So I'm going to choose ease in and out, and we typically want a fairly quick duration. 0.4 to 0.8 seconds is usually the sweet spot for artboard to artboard transitions. So let's go 0.6 seconds, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the play button right here at the top, just like that. It's going to launch my preview. And now I can just tap on Maria's face and it's going to transition me to the destination that was set, right? Simple. Let's check out very quickly some of the other easing options. So we have, sorry, the animations. We have, let's say slide left, for example, right? Not bad. Mostly would probably be used for mobile prototypes, but you can definitely use it for desktop and console prototypes as well. Let's go for push up, for example. Not bad. That's interesting. It could work. And I think if, you're, if you've used a Microsoft Surface device, for example, right, they have something similar to this where it kind of slides up as you're logging in. So it could work. Maybe we'll stick with that. Now, the next interaction I want to show you is auto animate. And this is where things get really fancy. And this will allow you to transition between two different artboards, but animate the changes and to really show you on a very simple level, right? How that works. Let me go into design mode. I'm going to create a new artboard just like that. So I grab my artboard tool over to the left, uh, drew one out. You can also use the presets over to the right within the properties inspector. Megan is asking, remind me what plugin you use to get those fun avatars. So it's not a plugin. Maybe there's a plugin in the works. I don't know. I can't tell you that. Maybe I did. I don't know, but it is a library called Toy Faces. And maybe Sam, if he does have the library at hand, he might be able to post it in the chat. But if you look up Toy Faces on Google, you'll be able to find them. But if I hop into my libraries, I did load them in as a new CC library. And I'm gonna go down to Toy Faces and I have all of them loaded in. Just amazing, beautiful, very diverse, faces that you can use in your projects, which is wonderful. So you can just drag one out just like that. They're huge. The resolution on these things is massive. Or of course, if you have a shape, whoop, boop, pop it in there. Oh yeah, there's the boop. There you go, Megan. Boop squad, where are you? Put some boops in the chat. So yeah, a fantastic resource. And again, there may be a plugin in the works. There may not be. I don't know. I can't confirm. Um, so yeah, Toy faces, fantastic. I think it, last I checked, it was $10 for that entire set of faces. And it comes with, let me go back for one second. It comes with all these faces with colored backgrounds. It also has black backgrounds and transparent backgrounds. And there, thank, thank you, Sam, I appreciate that. And you can also pay the author to the artist to create your own toy face. I have one in the works. He's very backed up with a, a ton of different uh, faces that he's working on. So I don't know when mine's going to be ready, but I did pay for one and I can't wait to see it. All right. So back to explaining about auto animate. Let me very quickly create a rectangle. This is going to be a very simple example, but it's going to show you, you know, what auto animate is. That's a terrible color. Let's go for a nice blue. There we go. There's all the boops in the chat. Sweet. All right, so we've got a rectangle over here. Let me actually move it over here. I'm going to duplicate my artboard and move the rectangle over. Maybe I'll also rotate it a bit, right? So essentially what Auto Animate does, like I mentioned, it allows you to transition between two artboards and animate those changes. So I'm going to create a wire. It's hard to see with the blue on blue, but drag it over to the second artboard. And this time I want to choose Auto Animate from within the Properties Inspector, right? And you can use the same easing options if you want. You know what, let's go for bounce, just because I'm feeling interesting today. So I'm gonna go for bounce with the duration of 0.6 seconds. And now I press pl play at the top and tap on this. 
it does the animation as you would expect. Bounce is terrible. I'm not going to use bounce. Let's go for ease in and out. Let's just bump this up to like three seconds, right? Right? Fancy. Very basic. So again, XD is looking when you press play and tap on the trigger object. In this case, it's the rectangle. XD is looking at the differences between the wired up artboards and is animating those changes. Now, on a more complex level, if we hop up here, on this artboard here, you're going to notice in the layers panel, if I look at this artboard and this next artboard, let me collapse some of these groups so it looks more or less similar. We have a lot of the same layers, and that's a key to using auto animate. And then I'm going to talk more about this over the next two weeks is you want to make sure that your layers are the same, the names are the same, the types are the same. So we have, you know, this example, right? This down here, we have this folder called games and inside of this folder, there is a repeat grid. There's also a text layer. And on this artboard, even though you can't see it, I still have that folder called games, right? With the same repeat grid, the same text layer, but I've just dropped the opacity to zero and moved it down. So XD is going to recognize both of those things, that the opacity has been dropped, also the actual group has been moved down. So it's going to take note of that stuff. Let me very quickly hide this because we don't need this right now. So what we're going to do is just like I showed you a moment ago, we're going to go into prototype mode and I already have one set up. I'm going to delete that. I am going to select an object that I want to tap on and drag the handle over to the next artboard. And again, I want to make sure to choose auto animate in this example and three seconds is way too long. So let's go for 0.8 seconds and let's try a snap this time, which right at the end of the interaction, it'll kind of just vroom, kind of settle into place. Oh, Henry says on the toy face website, they're working on an XD plugin. <gasps> oh, I guess, I guess it's been confirmed. Surprise. Um, yeah, they're working on a plugin unless you're lying, Henry. Maybe you're tricking me into saying that they're working on a plugin. I'm on to you. I know, I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. <laughs> okay. So we've got our handle set up, drag to the second artboard and create it and set auto animate as the type. So now I'm going to launch the preview one more time and boom. fancy, right? So all the layers that have been changed on the next artboard animated beautifully. Let me do that one more time. Let me actually, just to show you what's going on, let me select this wire and let's change this to five seconds so you can really see what's happening as the interaction is taking place, right? So again, XD is noticing what's different on both artboards and the changes are being animated. And you probably noticed, let me bring that down to 0.8 seconds. You probably noticed this section here, right? One of them got smaller, one of them got larger. And we're going to talk more about this feature as the two weeks goes on. But stacks made this process so much easier. Watch what happens when I go in. So if I select this group and over to the right, we've got the stack option turned on. If I needed to, I can adjust the spacing in between each one. Oh, Sam. Okay. Thank you, Sam. You confirmed it. Uh, on their website, Figma Sketch and XD to be released in the fall. Nice. And by the way, just to, now that it's out there, um, I have passed along some feedback and some interesting ideas for the artist who's working on this plugin. So maybe we'll see some fun things coming to this plugin when it does get released. All right. So I do have a stack enabled and what that's going to allow me to do is not only will allow me to very easily move objects around. So if I wanted, let's say, to, you know, to rearrange some of these avatars, I can easily do that by just dragging. But I can also, as I'm resizing either larger or smaller, it's pushing the other ones away, around, right? Or if I grab my rectangle tool, let's say I wanted another one in there, I can just drag a rectangle out just like that. And it just split that those, you know, split the seat, so to speak. And I was able to very easily add a new object right in there. And Muhammad says stacks are heaven. I agree. Stacks are heaven. So that's, that's a little peek about stacks. We're going to talk more about that as the weeks go on. So continuing on the auto animate train, right? Looking at this design really it's made for a console so over here i have an xbox i think this is an xbox one x controller x i don't know which one it is but i'm going to go ahead and actually turn this on and what's amazing about xd is that it 
contains gamepad support. So in addition to this tap trigger that I just chose, I can drag an additional, see this plus button? I can drag an additional wire to the exact same artboard, but now I have drag selected. Let's go ahead and actually select keys and gamepad. So not only does this allow me to use the various keys on my keyboard, let me zoom in here. Right, I can press any of the keys on my keyboard. Well, most of the keys, not all of them. Some of them are restricted uh, and do not work, but you know, I can press any of those. Or what I can do is I can use the either sticks or buttons on the gamepad. And you're noticing as I'm pressing these, right? It's entering them in inside of the properties inspector. So I can use the right arrow or the right thumb stick, for example, right? And now if I press play, I can just go, boop, boop. I forgot to, uh, there we go. Got to got to uh, lock it in there. Boop. Of course, I set the uh, the easing the duration way too slow. Let's go 0 0.8 seconds and one more time. Boop. There you go. So you can use gamepad triggers, gamepads, Xbox, PS. Four, five, whatever it might be. I need to get a hold of a PS5 controller, but you can use those to create amazing prototypes for your gaming experiences, right? Actually, sticking with that, one thing you can also do is use anchor links. So on this particular design, again, we have more information down below, below the fold. And I'm going to talk more about that uh, going forward. But I might want to be able to navigate down to those sections just using my gamepad. So I can select, let's say, this Browse Games button right here, right? And I'm going to drag this wire down to an object on the same artboard. So I'm going to just drag it down to this text layer, and it's going to automatically select the type as scroll to, just like that. I'm going to use my gamepad and use the down thumb, just like that, right? And I can also add a little bit of breathing room at the top. So I'm just going to grab this this handle at the, at the left and just drag it up, just so it's not right at the top of that text layer. And snap 0.8, let's see what that looks like. It's a little bit slow. So let's go for ease in and out and 0.4 seconds. That's a bit better, right? And now we can do the exact same thing for this layer. Just go right back up to the top. I'll just choose this logo, for example, or this layer at the top. And I will go for an up thumb, right? So we can go down and we can go, I forgot to lock that into place. So we can go down and up, all using our gamepad on our Xbox controller. We can also go back this way, right? Pretty cool stuff. One more thing before we move on, just to get a, just to have a little bit of fun, we can also go back and wire up additional prototype wires to, you know, we can have a bunch of them, right? So we can go, let's say a gamepad again, let's press the A button, transition, dissolve, great. But we can also start using voice triggers. So one more, I'm gonna drag this over to the right. And instead of keys and gamepad, let's go ahead and choose voice. And this will allow me to enter in a command that XD is going to listen out for. I almost said look out for, but it's actually listening now. So let's go for log me in, right? And we're going to keep the exact same settings. So now when I press the play button, of course, I can use my A key or A button on my controller to go to the next artboard. Or what I can do is I can hold down the space bar and say the command, log me in and it's gonna transition over to that next artboard. So you can do so much with voice interactions, gamepad interactions, and once you really start getting into prototyping, you can start creating single artboard prototypes, and you're gonna learn a lot of this in the coming weeks. So if I turn on this friends list, for example, right, I may want to be able to activate this just by clicking on this avatar. So what I wanna do very quickly is I have the avatar selected. I'm also gonna select the friends list, so I'm holding down the shift key and clicking on both of those. I want to turn both of these into a component. So you can do that within your assets in your libraries panel right here, or you can do it to the right within the properties inspector or the commander control K shortcut. And when you do that, you're going to have your new friends list popped into your assets. And of course you can drag that to additional artboards if you need to, or you can edit the main component to make sure everything's in sync, but you can also create additional states. So on this state here, I actually don't want the friends list to be displayed initially. So I'm gonna move it on over to the right. I'm gonna create one more state. Call this list. I am fighting for time right now. I'm gonna jump in here and move this over just like that. And then within prototype mode, again, you're gonna select the object you want a user to tap on. I'm gonna choose tap. 
auto animate. The destination can be chosen as the new component and state that we just created. And that looks pretty good. And now, whoop, there's our friends list. And it's all done on a single artboard. So there's so much more that I haven't covered that I will be covering in the next two weeks. But for now, I must say goodbye. But I will be back tomorrow with challenge number one. And again, we're doing something a little bit fancy tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Same time, same place. And make sure to hop into Discord, have a good time in the community and stick around. Alice and Sid are coming up with Doodle Therapy. I know I'm going to be tuning in to watch. And a big thank you to Marsha and Christian and Iswari and Sam and Irvin and Mohammed and everyone else joining me. And now we need a gamepad thingy. I agree, Marsha. So again, thank you everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow.